I have a piece of advice for you. Don't make the mistake that I have made many times, and I've not made this mistake actually for a while now. If you're someone who paints in a similar style to me, or you're looking to start painting in a similar style to me, in other words, if you're someone who uses a lot of water on the paper and you tape the paper down to a board, if you use, and I mean this, a lot of water, I mean, I really flood the page. It's like installing a swimming pool really on the board. If you're someone who does that, it's generally advisable not to let the painting dry flat. Yeah, you see that? That's really unfortunate. Because this is a big painting. Don't make my mistake. All you need to do to avoid this is, if you've used a lot of water, maybe, you know, run a towel over the tape to dry out the edges, but ultimately just don't leave it flat. Just stand it on the floor and turn it upside down, leave it upright, let the water run. The problem here is that the water just sits and then slowly seeps out. And what happens is the rest of the paper hits a point where it's much drier than the water that's in the tape. And so as that water escapes from under the tape, it just completely ruins your pigment, creates these cauliflower patches. And uh, sometimes that's an effect I go for deliberately. In this case, it definitely is not. So... conversation that I keep finding myself in for the last couple of weeks has been about style and how you find or develop an artistic style. And I want to say up front that I'm going to offer some practical tips here that I have found useful. It's not to say that I'm an expert, but I'm happy to share the benefit of my own personal experience. I think it can feel frustrating to feel disconnected from, from having a style that you feel is your own. Maybe that's something you've thought of before or that you've had experience with. There's a huge amount of information here on YouTube and you can learn about pretty much any topic. That includes painting, drawing, sculpting, pretty much any other kind of art that you can think of. There's a lot you can learn practically from videos. But I also think there's at least one thing that you can't pick up through a screen, and that's direct experience. That's hopefully pretty obvious to you. I would be worried <laughs> if you thought you were absorbing someone's memories and experiences through a video. So you might be wondering why I'm bringing it up at all. And in answering that question, I would like to pose another one. What actually is a style? What do we mean? Like, what? What is it? When we talk about the visual style of another artist, I think it's fair to say that we are generally exclusively talking about the purely visual components of a finished piece. Now, if you've ever copied a piece of art, and I'm not suggesting anything negative by the word copy here, but if you've ever copied another piece of art and you did it really well and you closely imitated the style of that artist, I'm willing to bet that even if you did do a great job, it didn't feel like you had that artist's style. 
And it wouldn't do, would it? There's something in the way there. Let's say there was an artist you found and you were just hooked on their style and you were determined to really understand the process and master the techniques and you put in the work to do exactly that and you take the time necessary to really become proficient at this style. By the time you've got to that point, it's not really going to feel the same anymore as it did when you looked at that first artist you saw painting in a, in a similar or even identical way. You've become, <laughs> you've become an art forger, essentially. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you'd have had this whole journey by this point of learning the process and finding out the frustrations, the bits that you didn't realize were going to be difficult and the happy accidents too, right? Along the way. You would have so many more and so many different mental associations with that style that it's just not going to feel the same as you thought it would or as it did when you first looked at it. And that's because there's this whole other component in this that we're ignoring right now. And that's the thing that's happening when you create that is just unique to you. And I don't really know what that is. <laughs> what I do know is that it includes all of the things that you've tried, all of the bits that you've kept and all of the others that you've left behind. And importantly, it also includes all the time that you've spent doing those things. And we recognize this for ourselves quite easily because we're the ones having that experience. But it's much easier to forget that that's also the case for everybody else. But here's the crucial thing. If you've agreed with me so far, and you're someone who feels that you don't really have much creativity in you or your own style in you, then you've actually just admitted that neither of those things are true. Because if you can recognize that even after putting that time into mastering a style, that it still might not really feel like you've got hold of the thing that you set out to grab onto in the first place, then you're recognizing the space where your own creative expression sits. That is your own unique stamp that will never feel like somebody else's. That is what that gap is. I think it's often in your blind spot and that's totally fine. At least, you know, I hope it is. So thinking of other artists' styles in purely visual terms sort of rigs the game against you because it implies that the style is something you can arrive at. But creative expression is a process. It's not, it's not an object, even if it is a noun. So we're just heading out to pick up I think it's two paintings from the framers. Is it two or is it three? Drove to the framers and pulled up just as I remembered that they're closed today. So we're doing well. Meanwhile, not much has changed here. And so these days, I tend to think of a style as beyond what's <laughs> beyond what's right and wrong technically and more sort of a culmination of things that you've tried and just the bits that you've chosen to keep it's about what you like stop looking so smug Speaking for myself, ongoing experimentation in my own process is really important. Every now and then I'll find something that completely and fundamentally changes how I approach my art or introduces a new aspect that I include in every painting that I do from that point on. Water-soluble wax is a really good example of that and the painting in this video is uh, one of many experiments I've done recently with gouache paint. Now I haven't made any decisions about how much I like it yet or how I would use it. 
But again, that's exactly how wax made its way into my art as well. And so we actually come full circle back here to YouTube because I first saw water soluble wax being used on the channel, The Danish Painter, the channel I really like. It's an artist called Mary Louise, I would highly recommend. So with that in mind, I want to offer three practical tips varying degrees of practicality, but they're things that I find helpful and they might just be all you need. The first is to find ways to seek out new inspirations, whether that means visiting new places, trying new mediums, or just watching other artists here on YouTube and giving things a go that you like the look of. The crucial thing is to stay open-minded, be open to trying new things and to changing parts of your process. The second one is to keep hold of your old paintings, including the ones that you don't like. And this is a really good practice to do anyway, partly because you can look back at old paintings and see how you've developed. And it gives you a bit of motivation when you just don't feel very good. It happens. <laughs> but it's also useful in a really practical way. When you want to try out a new dry medium, for example, you can pull out an old painting that you're not very attached to and give it a go on there, rather than start something new and risk creating something that you really like that does not work out because it was part of a crazy experiment on a new medium that you actually didn't think was probably going to work anyway. That is going to happen though, so just embrace it. But if you don't feel particularly brave one day, it's, it's a way to make it a bit less risky. Lastly, and I'll finish with this one, if you paint, paint, if you draw, draw, whatever you do, do it and keep doing it. Remove as many barriers as you can between you and it and keep doing it. Nothing really happens otherwise. So these were the thoughts that I had recently on finding or developing a style. I'd love to hear your thoughts too. If you'd like to share them, doesn't matter if you agree with me or disagree with me, it's totally fine. I haven't been doing a great job at keeping up with the painting live streams since the new year for a few reasons, which I'll go into at another time. But it does mean that I've had more time to edit the videos. So silver linings. I really appreciate you watching and I hope you have a great day.